In this video, I'll take a look at the Raspberry Pi 2 Portable Mark V. Hi, and welcome to the show. In this video, I'm taking a look at the latest build, the Raspberry Pi 2 Portable Mark V. I'll also show you step-by-step -step on how to make one of your own. Okay, so let's take a look around this unit. So clamshell design, as I've already discussed, power switch on the side. Um, there is access, uh, still chalky at the bottom, haven't done anything with the bottom. Access to get to the SD card, nothing across the front. Um, Raspberry Pi in this side here, and the charging port and uh, USB and barrel jack on the back with the hinges. So the unit itself uses the Adafruit TFT uh, 800 by 480 LCD screen, uh, an iPads Bluetooth keyboard, most of the keyboard itself, the bottom half of the keyboard here hasn't been used, and custom printed case, and Raspberry Pi and other familiar internals. So let's crack it open and take a look. Okay, just take the unit apart. Let's have a look on the inside. So what I've actually done here is this will be familiar to those that have uh, watched some of my videos before. I'm using the Palalu uh, power regulator, uh, exact model in the description of the video. The SparkFun board, I've used those a few times before. Uh, and this is a lithium ion polymer battery charger and um, uh, power and uh, project connectors on the board here and a four amp hour lithium polymer battery and the Raspberry Pi 2 and I've got the uh, Wi-Fi and the keyboard Bluetooth here. Um, but in this instance, aside from the screen, I'm actually using an Adafruit um, TFT Kipper. So the TFT Kipper means that it connects to the GPI, GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi 2 and takes five volt power from the project itself and has a 40 pin connector output to connect to a TFT display. And it works extremely well with the Adafruit uh, seven inch 800 by 400 resolution TFT display. And all you need to do is modify your config file a little bit and you actually end up with uh, a very compact solution in order to be able to drive a display. No more running any of these driver boards and trying to fit those inside of your project. Right, you just use the kipper. As long as you don't need the GPIO pins, you have a uh, method of running um, an LCD screen without taking up any more footprint inside a project. So there isn't a lot going on in here. The keyboard back uh, and the cover itself is a separate piece. Everything running off the 5 volt power regulator, uh, including the TFT Kipper, the Raspberry Pi underneath, and the SparkFun board connecting everything together, and the battery providing power. And obviously the LCD in the top, getting all it needs from this 40 pin ribbon connector. And in the back of the LCD, there is actually nothing more in the back of the LCD other than a 40 to 40 pin, other than one of these little connector boards, 40 to 40 pin. So. That is all that's going on in the back of that display. And that is all the parts that you actually need in order to be able to put together this particular project. And the reason this one worked out so well, and there's actually quite a lot of spare space inside this project, and the reason I was able, able to shrink it down as much as I have is because of that kipper and not being able to, uh, or not needing to drive a full-sized LCD driver board. The other space or the other size constraints was the seven inch LCD and the keyboard that I wanted to use. Now this particular keyboard is your standard thumb board, your media uh, type driver board, uh, the iPads port brand again. And this particular one I've gone for because when you're actually using the device, holding it in your hands like this, it actually drives quite nicely. Your thumbs are able to reach all of the keyboard without actually having to reach over very uncomfortably and try and hit certain keys depending on where they were on the keyboard, if it was a full-size keyboard like the Rai keyboard, which I quite like. But this one suits this project much better because your thumbs are able to reach the entire key layout and you can just reach over a little bit further and operate the mouse on the screen if you really need to, or just use a single finger and there you go, you're driving the mouse around. 
Right, on this project, I actually spent quite a lot of time on the case design, so let me take you through what I've done. So there are four pieces, the bottom half of the case, the outer shell of the case, and the front panel insert and the keyboard insert. Did it in four pieces, obviously it wasn't really possible to print all of this in one piece and this ended up being really easy to assemble, um, a little more difficult to design, but really easy to assemble in the end and very satisfying. So bottom half, uh, if you take a look at some of the design files, the cutout for the Raspberry Pi and the battery and the power regulator and the spark fun board and the switch has all been incorporated into the design. So it's more like just clipping things together. And as you can see, uh, the battery and uh, maybe not the power regulator, it's just a little bit loose at the moment, but the SparkFun board, the battery and the Raspberry Pi don't even need any additional support. They just sit inside of those constraints and it holds it in there quite nicely. So with the LCD, I'll pop the LCD out and show you what I've done in there. Okay, so with the LCD, the faceplate fits very snugly into the lid cavity. And on the back of the uh, front panel, all I've done is designed a flat plate and designed six of these small hooks, which enables the actual display to slide in and out sideways. All I've done is just taken the display, being careful of the ribbon connectors and just taped down the connector here just being careful of the ribbon connectors and slid the display inside of these clips and perfect fit on that side of the house there. You can actually see a little discoloration and an upside down A here. I still actually have the plastic screen protector attached. And that simply sits in there. And the fit is so snug, it will actually operate without any of the screws. However, there are screw spacings and the ability to uh, tighten up and uh, ability to put some screws in there and tighten up the entire project. All right, so when using this Adafruit TFT Kipper, obviously your LCD ribbon cable connects through here and out through your double adapter and connects to the LCD. When you're using this and you're connecting it to a Raspberry Pi, you can obviously see the 40 pin connections right across the bottom here that piggybacks on and presses onto the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. Uh, this is not populated. Uh, when there is a chip in this particular section right here, so just here, this is populated, this turns it into a touch screen enabled device as well. So there's a non-touch version and a touch version. This is the, the one on the screen at the moment is the non-touch display because the chip is not populated. Uh, not much else to see here. However, you do need to solder some connections through these jumpers here in order to be able to set the screen brightness. And you do need to be able to provide power to the kipper by connecting ground and five volts to your project separately. So I'll show you exactly what I've done with this particular project. I'll just pop the uh, Raspberry Pi out of the project and I will detach the kipper. Okay, so there is how the kipper and the Raspberry Pi 2 connect using all of the GPIO pins. It does mean that you can't use any GPIO pins for uh, additional peripherals or connectivity. They're all pretty much taken up by the kipper. So that's how they mate up just like that. All the GPIO pins connected there. All right. And as you can see here on this particular board, this one does have the chip. This is a touchscreen version of the Kipper, but I'm not using touchscreen interface. Uh, it does have five volts and ground connected to the five volt and ground pins. As you can see there, there are a few ground options, but ground and five volts for this particular project, all of the pins. And just up here, you will notice, and I'll put the two side by side, you will notice that these three pads, these three here, have been soldered on the board that I'm actually using. 
this is your backlight control. Obviously you don't have backlight control because there's no individual driver or board that you can uh, interact with to set backlight. You have to do that on these jumpers on the TFT Kipper itself. And what they basically recommend is the first pad you solder together to be able to provide a certain milliamp uh, backlight that is suitable for 4.3 or smaller displays. They recommend that you connect uh, solder, uh, solder pad over those two and those two for a five inch display. And they recommend that you do all three like I've done here for a seven inch display. And it provides about 125 milliamps of power to the backlight of the LCD, providing a very nice bright seven inch display in my case. So wiring up and connecting up this project using the parts, not very hard at all. Let me take you through it. The battery is obviously connected via a JST connector to the battery input of this SparkFun board. And the output runs through a switch and heads to the input up this end. This is the ground and the voltage in of the power regulator. And I have two things connected up here. One is the keyboard itself right and the reason I've done that is this particular keyboard runs two AAs so it's a three volt system not quite certain whether or not it would take five volts it probably is five volt tolerant but by connecting it directly to the lithium-ion battery typically it's only ever going to be receiving 4.2 volts peak and average will be 3.7 volts so it's much much closer to its native uh, voltage and I've connected it up that way Everything else in there is connected, so the 5 volt for the kipper, the 5 volt for the Raspberry Pi on the bottom there, and is all taking from the power out of the power regulator just here. And that is about as complex as it gets. So as long as you're providing power, 5 volts to the kipper and the Raspberry Pi and your keyboard, however you'd like to power that, um, that is it. LCD takes power from the kipper and everything else is very, very simple. So this connects together very closely to some of the projects I've done recently, uh, the only difference being the TFT Kipper. And that is about it. So in order to get the Raspberry Pi and the Kipper talking, you do need to make a small change to the standard Raspbian config file. There are just a few lines that you need to add to the standard config file in your Raspbian image for the uh, two items, the Raspberry Pi and the TFT Kipper to start talking and to be able to reset or set that screen up to run 800 by 480 resolution natively. So if you just add these particular lines to your Raspbian's config file and attach your Kipper and reboot, you should be right to go. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe, that would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.